Hello and welcome to Tech for PD. I'm Chad Jackson. And I'm Jim Brown. Today we're going to talk about whether you should focus on data or processes first when you look at PLM. Um, Chad, maybe you could start and talk a little bit about data. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So when we talk about data and PLM, and actually all of product development, there's a lot of different levels that you can go after. Right. Uh, the first level is all about CAD, managing your, your 3D models and all the documentation that goes with that. But even within, in, within engineering, you can expand beyond that. You can start to get into documentation like specifications, so on and so forth. Uh, but also you can expand beyond that even into the enterprise. So you start looking at service documentation, manufacturing documentation and procurement. So there's a lot just within the data management realm. Right, and, and process is similar because you can look at some very simple processes that happen within a design team, things like um, revisioning processes, engineering change control, um, release to manufacturing, yeah. you know, those processes that are very finite but, but also very important. Uh, but then PLM has really expanded to cover a whole range of processes, anything from, you know, in the quality world, uh, things like failure modes and effects analysis, yep. um, APQP. Um, you can look in at things like design for compliance. There's just a tremendous amount that you can do in the whole realm of product development, innovation, and engineering from a process perspective. Lots of value to be had. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and just to be clear, so today Jim and I are going to be debating what you should do first with PLM? Where should your focus start, whether it should be data or process? Not whether you have those things under control to begin with, because obviously that's very important. I would say so. All so right. let's get to the debate. Sounds good. So let's jump into the debate. Um, Chad, being the uh, data wonk that you are, nice. I think nice. we know the direction that we're going on this one. Yeah, I, and I guess I'm predictable so far, but it's not going to sway me from my position. Um, so I do Don't believe, let the facts get in the way. <laughs> especially when it supports you. Um, so my position is that you do need to have your data under control. It should be f your first focus for PLM. And, and, the re and you know we've had this adage in the industry for a long time, and I think it's still true, that if you enable your processes first and it's enabled off of data that isn't under control, then you're probably going to be making decisions based on the wrong data, and you'll be making wrong decisions. So uh, I think you got to get it under control first, um, and then you can move on to process after that. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I think differently. I mean, I think there's levels of data, right? There's there's files, right? Mm -hmm. There's CAD files. Um, there are documents that you're going to manage that are just need to be revision controlled and managed and centralized so people can get to them. Totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, then when you go beyond that and you want to start to really enable processes, you want to do something, you want to accomplish a pro, you know, accomplish a task with it. Yeah. Um, then you need to figure out who's going to do what in what sequence, and how does what I do support what you do support the person downstream from you? Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you need to know that process flow first to know what data everybody needs to do their job. So if you don't understand the process. It's, there's no way to understand what data you need in the first place. Yep, yeah, I think that's a fair point. And although I will say that you know, people today are using things like email uh, to run those processes and referencing the right data um, would still be a, a valid way to do that, even if the data is then in a PLM system. Um, however, I think there's also another issue, and it's it's around kind of a trend in many organizations today to try to enable their employees to think with a little less constraint, mm -hmm. uh, a little less rigor in terms of you must do A, then B, then C, and to make the right decisions for the organization. And you know, if, if you can get that working for the company, right. then the organization stands for a lot of gains. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there. So you don't want to reduce your employees just to dumb cattle to you know, sort you know, do the dots in a row, right. right? You want them to add value along the way. Okay, so don't don't get me as signing everybody up for making your engineers dumb cattle. Not the plan. Um, here's my thought, though. No. Um, I would love, I would love to have. Uh, if I was going to have a parade, right? First of all, dumb cattle aren't the right thing to do. What I would do is maybe yeah. have a herd of really smart horses, a team of horses. And what they would do is they would all be trained to do things 
either uh, you know, in synchronous uh, fashion or they would be doing things that were coordinating. And unless you know what people need to do to work as a team together, whether it's a work group or the enterprise, then you don't know what you need to support it. So I absolutely agree. People need to have flexibility and not have handcuffs on them. Yeah. At the same time, you need to align what people are doing or it's, it's chaos and mayhem yeah. instead of a business. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I think that's a valid point. The, the, I think ultimately the question is, where does the organization get the most value as its first step in a PLM? Do, should it be get your data under control and have it centrally accessed and secure? That's what I advocate. And you're saying that the best value first is going to be enabling your processes, focusing there first. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think short of short of like purely just controlling files. Yeah. Yeah. When you get into the PLM world and you're really starting to talk about accomplishing business thing, you know, business initiatives mm -hmm. and and tasks. Absolutely, you have to focus on process. Okay. First. All right. Well, I think this is this is going to be a really interesting vote for the viewers to see where they see the most value is. I think it's a, I think it's a very timely debate. Absolutely. In the industry. Peer into your crystal ball, Chad. What do you see? <laughs> so, uh, so I think what's interesting about this debate, uh, I, I think software providers are getting a little bit more smart about how they approach this conundrum. Yeah. Um, and I think what you're going to see is more integrated offerings. I mean, where they really look at, okay, what is the data you need to support the processes, and, and what does the process need in terms of data? And you're going to see incremental sets that you can deploy uh, in one fell swoop. And it won't be, should I get my data under control or do I automate my processes? It's the, the question will become moot. Yeah, no, and I, and I think what you're talking about is the maturity of PLM as an enterprise application um, as opposed to just being data or, or processes. We're seeing an integrated solution that really ties the two together and, and already understands the problems that are to be solved mm -hmm. and has the data required for something you know, like a, a quality process. Right already has thought through what that data is and not have to have every company develop that themselves. And I, I think absolutely you're right on the, yeah. on the direction for those things. Um, the other thing I think we're going to see too is more composite applications where you've got different applications, be it uh, ERP, uh, supply chain, maybe, maybe service, um, and we're yeah. going to start to see applications that access data from different systems to accomplish a task. And I, I think we're going to see mm -hmm. more in that. And, yeah. and the granular nature of the data in the systems and, and with APIs and that sort of thing, I think is really there to support it. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. All right, well, that that's our crystal ball session. Now we get to the, your favorite part of the episode. My favorite part. <laughs> Mine too. Uh, but let's take a look at the consequence from the person that lost the last episode. Hi, it's Jim, and because you're seeing me, it must mean that you believe that technology is ready and uh, culture is ready to use simulation technology in the concept phase. And I'm happy to hear that. I'm glad people are willing to spend the right amount of time to get things right up front. Um, so because of that, it's time for me to suffer the consequence. The consequence this time is to get a full makeover. And uh, because we spare no expense, on Tech for PD, we brought in a true professional designer to come in and do this. And uh, she's decided that she's going to make me up to be, look like the coolest person she's ever met. Which, oddly enough, is Chad Jackson. So I'd like to introduce Amanda. Amanda, you may begin. Thank you to our fashion designer, Amanda. I'm Chad from Tech for PD, and I'm here to tell you, Jim is wrong. So Chad, I'm not really sure why we do this, but... Uh, yeah, no kidding. So. It's exercise in pain. So um, to, to close out, we'd like to thank our founding sponsor, PTC, for making uh, the show possible. Right. Thanks for joining us.